Megamaba, I'm Henry Zin. Welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today, where we bring you the latest news and reports from around Myanmar. The first report is on commencing of pilot project of YBS Railways Interchange. Another report on supporters gathered for State Councillor's defence in ICJ. A story coverage on women in business and leadership development. And lastly, a report on 2019 Myanmar Car of the Year. Now, before we get to the reports, why don't we have a look at what's happening in local news. State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi attended and addressed the opening ceremony of the Medical Skill Simulation and Research Center held in the compound of University of Medicine 1 in Yangon on Monday. The State Councillor spoke of the day being a dawn of another unique success in the teaching and practicing history of medical and related universities. She also said, quote, We still need to do more for our country's medical education, teaching and training to reach international level, and that emphasized on research works of the universities. The State Councillor said, Research plays a vital role in the existence and development or progress of universities. Progress and development in research greatly support a country's development. Much needs to be done toward development in research. State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi attended the grand opening ceremony of University of Yangon's centennial celebrated in its convocation hall on campus on Monday and delivered a speech. The State Councillor said the government is renovating and upgrading the university during its centennial period by forming work committees for a master plan, which is being implemented by a steering committee chaired by the Union Minister for Education. She added, quote, In the aspect of education reform, a faculty system will be established and its curricula will be reviewed and developed. Its curricula and policy reform are intended for ensuring quality improvement, socio-economic development, effective cooperation with international universities, and easy student mobility. The Indoji Lake in Monyan Township, Kachin State, received more than 10,000 tourists this year, according to data provided by the Indoji Wetland Education Centre. Dopiu Mama from Fauna and Flora International, who is serving at the Indoji Wetland Education Centre, said tourists enjoyed boat tours in the lake, trekking along the mountain near the lake, and observing bird species and monkeys, and traditions and customs of the local ethnic people. Head of the Indoji Wildlife Sanctuary said the Indoji area is being conserved with the help of a German development partner, and majority of the visitors are German. Indoji Lake is one of the largest freshwater lakes in Southeast Asia. It was designated an ASEAN Heritage Park in 2013, a Ramsar site in 2016, and a Biosphere Reserve in 2017. The value of Myanmar's imports surpassed exports in bilateral trade with Singapore in the 2018-2019 financial year, according to data from the Ministry of Commerce. Singapore is Myanmar's second largest trading partner in the region, after Thailand. Udan Xinluin, Director General of the DAICA at the Myanmar Singapore Business Summit 2019, held on November 14th, said, In the current 2019 2020 financial year, Singapore listed companies have discussed investing in Myanmar's energy and banking businesses with the Myanmar Investment Commission, and there is potential to increase investments. That's all with the local news, and here's the first report on Myanmar today. The first ever pilot project for YBS Railways Interchange commenced on Monday at the Mine Railway Station. The project mainly aims to help commuters interchange their right from YBS to train or vice versa and make the process convenient at the same time, reducing time wastage and delays for commuters in the process of interchange. Willinson reports. In collaboration with Traffic Police, YCDC, Myanmar Railways, JICA and YRTA, the first ever pilot project in Yangon for interchange between railway and YBS was first carried out on 2nd of December at the Mine Railway Station. The pilot project will be carried out till 8th of December under the supervision of JICA, which is the key player for technical support for the project. With the increasing number of population and bus-centered transport system for daily commuters, which caused a daily heavy traffic jam almost every day in Yangon. Nearly 2 million daily commuters use the bus for their transportation in the city, therefore with the aim to reduce the traffic jam and provide the public with more options in their daily means of commuting, the project was commenced. The pilot project will allow the commuters 
interchange their way quickly from train to YBS or YBS to train. Speaking at the commencing ceremony of the project, Ula Aung, Joint Secretary of YRTA said, Although there are three main transportation ways for the public in Yango, such as YBS, water bus and train, YBS is the most reliable one for the public and it has also become the most effective means to travel around Yango. As NLD-led government is in the midst of implementing better transport system in Myanmar, the implementation is not quite effective as it should be due to insufficient human resources and lack of technical support. This is the reason why we are collaborating with some of the international organizations such as JIGA, ADB and other organizations for the necessary support. This project will help us improve the transport system in Yango. Commencing this project does not mean that it will bring the change to transport system and solve all about transportation in Yango because this is a pilot project for us. Though this may not solve the traffic jam problem in Yango effectively, it is definitely very much essential for the future transport system in Myanmar. The main aim of this pilot project is to make it easier for the commuters transit from bus to train or vice versa. The project also includes listening to the voice of the public whether the project is helpful in their daily travel or not. As the main focus for the pilot project is at the main railway station, it will study how many passengers use the train from this station and how they use the bus after the interchange. Speaking to the media on the importance of this pilot study, Mr. Yuji Sanu, representative of Jai Kamyama office said, We are now working on improving the public transportation system in Yangon City. And in order to do that, we need to uh, make use of the full potential of the existing transport system. So now we have the circular railways and also public bus transportation systems. And in, by connecting these two, uh, we can uh, make the uh, clear demarcation between the bus service and uh, train services. And by doing that, uh, people can effectively use both modes of transportation. So uh, we think that this kind of project would uh, contribute to the improvement of the transportation system as a whole. Speaking on how far this project will help solve the problem of congestion in Yangon, if the project goes well, Mr. Yuji also explains. So this is a, a pilot project. So now we are uh, piloting whether our our uh, improvement measures could work or not. So uh, if that is possible, uh, it would be uh, yeah, possible to replicate, it, replicate this kind of model uh, in other sites. Yeah, but now we are under discussion. We have been uh, doing kind of uh, preliminary survey for several uh, possible uh, project sites and we chose this Tamai station because that uh, there are a lot of passengers and also uh, the uh, bus station is uh, suitable for some uh, improvement works. So that's why we chose uh, this uh, project site and uh, yeah, this site as a, uh, for this project. This is Wilson reporting for MI Radio. That's a report on commencing of the pilot project of YBS Railways Interchange. All right, it's time now to check on the weather forecast in Myanmar. In Yangon, a pleasant weather with plenty of sunshine, but air quality will be unhealthy for sensitive groups during the day. And of course, the night sky will be clear. The temperature throughout the day will be in the 30s, but the entire day heat will give in to the temperature cooling off at night at about 20 degrees Celsius. There's a 25% chance of rain for the day with winds of up to 11 km per hour. In Ebido, it's partly sunny with a shower. Now that is really surprising since it's already the month of December and there's going to be a shower. The sky is mainly clear at night. The temperature through the day will be in the 30s as well. But of course, with the temperature cooling off at night at around 18 degrees Celsius, tuck in your bed with the chilly night weather. There's about 56% chance of rain for the day with winds of up to 6 km per hour. 
In Mandalay, a nice weather with mostly sunny conditions in the day, and the sky is clear to partly cloudy at night. The temperature throughout the day will be in the 30s, but the temperature is dropping to about 18 degrees Celsius, so that would compensate for the entire day's heat. There's about 25% chance of rain, with winds of up to 7 km per hour. Well, we have another report coming up, and then we'll check on the stocks and currency exchange rates. Hundreds of people flocked to Mahabandula Park in Yangon on Sunday to show their support for State Councillor Don San Suu Kyi, who is preparing to defend the country against human rights violation allegations at the International Court of Justice. Yen I will tell us more. Hundreds of people flocked to Mahabandula Park in Yangon on Sunday to show their support for State Councillor Dong San Suu Kyi, who is preparing to defend the country against human rights violation allegations at the International Court. About 800 supporters and members of the National League for Democracy Party rallied at the Yangon City Hall. The supporters will listen to music, join in singing the song and waving national flag. The support campaigns have been held in the country to show strong stand with the leader. Moreover, recently Myanmar people living in London showed support to the leader's effort to tackle the case at the ICJ. We organized this event to show our serious and firm support to our leader, Da Aung San Suu Kyi, who is ongoing to International Court of Justice against the human rights violation accusations. Today, we will show support by chanting with the slogan, We stand with Da Aung San Suu Kyi, and we have strong performance. There will be another event on 10 of December as well. Gambia lodged 46-page human rights violation allegation on the Rakhine issue against Myanmar. Myanmar is to defend the case at the International Court of Justice. While people are showing support for the leader's firm stand for the case at ICJ, they are also concerned with the complexity of the case. This case is very profound and vast. It's very fragile. This harms the dignity and benefits of our country. We strongly disapprove the allocation on that the State Council of the Aung San Suu Kyi is going to stand up and defend the country against it. We profoundly support and we are very satisfied and appreciate it. Our leader is going to address this case at ICJ on 10th of December. In doing so, we firmly support her lead on this matter. This is one of the responsibilities of each and every citizen in this country. This is the responsibility of people who reside in the Union. As Lutor representative, this is the cause of our country and so we will be standing with our leader. In supporting our leader, I wish there are support campaigns like this in other parts of the country. I would like to urge not only people here but also other ethnic people to join hands in supporting our leader. If we are united, then we will possess a good future. The International Court of Justice ICJ, sometimes called the World Court, is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations UN. The ICJ's primary functions are to settle international legal disputes submitted by states and give advisory opinions on legal issues referred to it by the UN. Through its opinions and rulings, it serves as a source of international law. The ICJ is the successor of the Permanent Court of International Justice, which was established by the League of Nations in 1920 and began its first session in 1922. After the Second World War, both the League and the PCIJ were succeeded by the United Nations and ICJ, respectively. The statute of the ICJ draws heavily from that of its predecessor, and the latter's decisions remain valid. All members of the UN are party to the ICJ statute. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. 
That's a report on supporters gathered for State Councillor's defence in ICJ. Here we have the information on currency rates from Myanmar Central Bank. One US dollar is at 1,506 juts. One Chinese renminbi is at 214 juts. One euro is at 1,659 juts. One pound sterling is at 1,945 juts. One Singapore dollar is at 1,100 juts. One Malaysian ringgit is at 360 juts. One Thai baht is at 49 juts and the Indian rupee is at 21 juts. Gold is trading at $1,461. Silver is at $16. And brand crude oil is at $56. On the Yangon Stock Exchange, FMI is at $11,500. MTSH is at $3,850. MCB remains at $8,300. FPB is at $23,000. TMH remains at $2,850. Yo, with MI Radio's Myanmar today, you can log on to our website at miradio.com.mm and catch many other great programs of MI Radio on the website. We're also running on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Manali, and 96.7 in Nebido. Alternatively, you can download our app on both iOS and Android platforms. It's easy to search. Just type in Myanmar INTL Radio and you'll find the app. Download it on your devices so you can listen to our radio programs on the go. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. To empower women to get involved in business fields and achieve leadership positions, the conference called Women in Business and Leadership Development was organized by Ostcham Myanmar on Saturday at Rosewood Hotel in Yangon. Participants shared the challenges women are facing in the workplace and discussed how to encourage young women to be in the workforce. Dodaswizin reports. Ostcham, an Australian NGO, hosted the fourth Women in Business and Leadership Development Conference, which brought together the participants from different sectors of businesses, entrepreneurs, and leadership positions, sharing the insights and advices for women in empowerment and gender equality. The conference, with a focus of breaking through the glass ceiling, kicked off at Rosewood Hall, Te Yangon, on 30 November. The objective of today's event is absolutely to create an opportunity for female Myanmar leaders and business leaders to come together. We really want to have an opportunity for Myanmar women who are going to be future leaders of this country to participate, to grow, to listen to other leaders, to have um, a session where we can all encourage each other to develop an equal opportunity and w women empowerment in our economy and our business. I think that Myanmar is a country that has opened up recently and many opportunities have come um, and have opened up. But at the same time, there's a lot of change that needs to happen. And so certainly in terms of talking about a glass ceiling, as some of the panellists mentioned, it can be different for different people in different situations. There's a lot to be done in education. There's a lot to be done, I guess, in um, the country opening up and uh, the adjustment to new cultures, adjustment to international practices. Um, I don't think of these so much as a barrier or a ceiling, but I see it as a challenge. And I see it as something which is why a forum like this is so important that we get everyone together, the opportunity for young Myanmar people, but at the same time using the skills, the knowledge of those who are older, those from abroad, those with education and those with experience. And I hope together that's how we can overcome these barriers. One of the panelists, Dolly Liang, program director of Plan International Myanmar, which is implementing the community-based projects in some states and regions in Myanmar, explained about the participation of Yen women in these projects. And I think you know, the, the change that you see in girls is transformational. The, for the first time, they're learning how to be confident, how to take on this leadership role, and they're part of the school management committee for the first time together with boys. And I think they're starting to really earn respect from their teachers in the communities. And I think that really helped change public perception in terms of what girls can do and, and the change that they can bring about. And so we, we implement similar um, initiatives in all of the different sectors that plan, and they include education, employment, employment, leadership, um, and, and health and nutrition. And I think, you know, there, there are a few gaps. I think one is, is building that leadership skills early on, building that confidence, 
Because we have a lot of harmful culture and social norms in this country, and they are really affecting our girls. They are, they're growing up without that confidence, so that's one. And then second, women professionals who are already working, they are torn with all of the pressures from the society. They, they're worried about being blamed as not being a good mother, a good wife, a good employee, and that that psychological impact is huge, yes? And so then that's impacting their ability to move up to senior positions. And then the third, women who are already in senior positions are worried about the, the, some of the attacks and some of the challenges that they face. Honestly, I think women's positional and personal powers are tested every day. Over 50% of women are not in the workforce, so it is important to encourage them to get involved in business fields as well as to achieve the leadership roles. Even before, way before women can enter into the workforce, there are a lot of socio-cultural barriers that women have to overcome, some in the name of culture, tradition, and religion. So women have to break through those um, barriers to get onto the workforce and then to try hard. So those are the very first steps. But once you get into the workforce, once you get to the play, uh, play field, then uh, women are already, those women are already capable and proven of the success and they could do it. So we have to create an environment in an organization where women belong due to the skill set and intelligence. So we have to, to create a culture that the, both women and women, uh, men and women, anyone is free to share the challenges and um, feel, they feel f um, safe and comfortable to share, share the challenges and to ask for the support to overcoming them. That's all for now. This is Laura Susan from MI Radio. As a report on women in business and leadership development. And here's the last report on 2019 Myanmar Car of the Year. Myanmar Car of the Year Award event was held at Junction Square last week, where the best and the most popular imported cars for the year were awarded. Yenai has the details. The Myanmar Car of the Year Award event was held at the promotion area in Junction Square on November 27th where the best and the most popular imported cars for the year were awarded. The event was organized by Drive Media Myanmar, which is a media platform covering the latest cars and trends. Like the International Auto Contest, the panel of judges include local and international auto experts as well as auto journalists. The registration for the competition and the test drives kick off since October, and the assessments have been collected since then. For more on the primary purpose, Ujo Jo Mien tells us more. He is part of organizing team as well as a judge for the competition. We have come up with three primary purposes. The first one is to promote for a brand new auto market. The next is for the market expansion of the left-hand drive cars as there are more and more production around the world. The study and tests also show left-hand drive cars are much better for road safety. And we also hope the market for those cars will expand here. The last thing we aim for is to improve riding specializations. And here we have less attempts to do so. And we also want to develop auto journalism in the country. With these purposes, we host the event. Twelve motor companies registered for Myanmar Car of the Year with different kinds of 43 cars. The criteria include robustness, safety and security, design, ease of maintenance, reasonable price and assurance. Out of 43 cars, we have to work out for 15 kinds of awards with the 12 categories. 
three of them are Jury's Choice Awards, and the next award is People's Choice Award, which is the most popular car award. Drive Media set up voting for it. The next is Brand of the Year Award. That award goes to the most successful brands from evaluating the people preferences, market share, and the success. Here are some of the amazing 15 awards. The Best Family Student Award won to Chevrolet Malibu. Hyundai Tucson got the Best Small Family SUV Award. And the Best Medium Sized Family SUV Award won to Kia Sorento. Nissan Terra got the Best Large Size Family SUV Award and the Best Family MPV Award. Mitsubishi Spenda 25,900. Range Rover Villa received the Best Luxury SUV Award and then the Best Pickup Award to Ford Ranger Raptor. Borg Ward BX5 36,900 got Jury's Choice Award and Toyota Camry received People's Choice Award and Toyota become the brand of the year. Mr. Burai Dimertas, Managing Director of Capital Automotive Limited also said, Actually, in terms of marketing, last year we got three awards, two with Jaguar Land Rover, Land Rover and one with Ford. The effect was quite uh, positive, I can say, because during your marketing activity, you have to focus on your uh, awards and achievements. And the people, the consumer in this industry, uh, it's not mature market, as you know, it's just emerging market. And the people are really happy when they see your award, they are having or feeling more confident with the brand. Actually, we have great brands, to be honest. Everybody knows in this world, but when they see something uh, like tangible, like awarded, they are having some uh, quite nice and positive impact with this. Myanmar Car of the Year event was held since 2017, and this year is the third time they organized. And that's all the reports on Myanmar today. Now let's carry on with international news. A sperm whale which died after stranding on the Isle of Harris had a 100 kilogram litter ball in its stomach. Fishing nets, rope, packing straps, bags and plastic cups were among the items discovered in a compacted mass. Whale experts said it was not immediately clear whether the debris had contributed to the whale's death. But locals who found the carcass on Shalabost Beach on Thursday said it highlighted the, wind, the wider problem of marine pollution. Members of the Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme, an organization that investigates the death of whales and dolphins, dissected the whale to try and determine its cause of death. In other news, artificial intelligence cameras capable of detecting drivers who are using their mobiles illegally have been activated in Australia. The cameras were launched by New South Wales Transport on Sunday. Drivers spotted by the AI during its first three months of use will receive a warning letter, but after that, they could face a fine. A trial of the tool in the first half of 2019 successfully detected 100,000 drivers using a mobile illegally. The detection network will be expanded to 45 AI-equipped cameras by 2023, according to NSW Transport. The authority said it believed the detection system was a world first. It uses high-definition cameras to take photos of the front row cabin space of vehicles in all weather conditions. A tiger has undertaken the longest walk ever recorded in India, traveling some 1,300 kilometers in five months. Experts believe the two-and-a-half-year-old male is possibly in search of prey territory or a mate. The tiger, which is fitted with a radio collar, left its home in a wildlife sanctuary in the western state of Maharashtra in June. It was then tracked traveling back and forth over farms, water and highways and into a neighboring state. So far, the tiger has come into conflict with humans only once, when it accidentally injured one person who was part of a group that entered a thicket under which it was resting. He was fitted with a radio collar in February and continued to roam the forests until the onset of monsoon rains to find a suitable area to settle. Well, that's going to wrap it up on today's Myanmar Today. Thank you for joining me and you have a good day. I'm Henry Zin. See you again.